In this week's video, we are back with this GameCube that we worked on in the last video. We added a Pico boot, and we also added in the missing SP2 port. So we hardwired in the SD to SP2 adapter in where the SP2 port should have been in the first place. But this is a later model doll 001 that was missing the port. Nintendo started to remove the ports in later models in order to save some money on manufacturing. If you have a doll 001 that is missing the port, it's a lot easier to add that port back in than it is with the doll 101. But it is still possible and maybe we'll be able to look at that in an upcoming video. But I will put a link to the previous GameCube video in uh, this corner or, or maybe this corner or uh, it'll be somewhere. Somewhere up here. So now that we have all those hardware changes done, what can we do with this thing? The first thing you need to set up is a program called Swiss, which is what actually boots the GameCube. That is super simple. You go to the Swiss GitHub page, which I will put a link in the description down below. You download the latest version and it'll have some sort of weird name .dol. .dol files are the files that the GameCube can launch. Their GameCube programs. So you take the, the Swiss doll file and you put it on your SD card and you rename it to IPL.DOL and that is it. When you boot a system that has Pico boot, it immediately looks to the SD card and the SD card can be either in the SP2 port or you can use um, an SD gecko like this one which is goes into the memory card slot. And when it finds a file called IPL.DOL, that is what it will boot when it starts the system. Let's go ahead and boot Swiss. So when Pico boot boots up, it automatically looks for the IPL.DOL file, and that will boot us into Swiss. One of the other things that we can do is if you name files after the buttons, so a.dull, b.dull, x.dull, or y.dull, if you hold one of these buttons down when you power up the GameCube, it will load that particular piece of software rather than going into Swiss. So you can do that with some emulators, for example, which we'll go over in a little bit more detail later on. But if you hold down the A button and I turn it on, it boots into the NES emulator that I have set up. If I hold the B button down and turn it on, it immediately boots into the Super Nintendo emulator that I have set up. So there's a lot of different options that you can use with Pico Boot in order to just directly boot into some software that you want to use rather than having to go through Swiss. I found this, uh, this website called uh, gcforever.com and I'll put a link for it down below. Uh, but it had links and information on all of these different uh, homebrew games uh, and homebrew softwares that I'm going to be using on here. So one of the biggest questions that you're going to have right off the hop is how do I back up my, my disc-based games? Uh, someday this drive is going to die. No, no doubt about it. The laser is going to be shot. Something's going to happen. And we need to make sure that we can keep playing our games because sometimes there's not going to be parts available. So the first piece of software that I want to show you is called Clean Rip. So we put our game in that we want to back up and then on our memory card or on our SD card that we put in, I download it. And again, all of these links are in the, on the GC Forever site. There's a program called Clean Rip. And what this will do is it will allow us to actually extract the game from the disk and put it onto our SD card. So the checksum thing is just to absolutely make sure that it's got an absolutely pristine copy of your game. I'm going to just skip that part. And we're going to send it to the SD card. And our SD card is already in fat, so that's fine. And then we want to make sure that we're sending it to the right SD card. We're going to send it there. We already have our, our SD card in there. And we've got a disk in the machine. And it's not an unlicensed disk. Yeah, let's remember that setting so we don't get asked ever again. So now it's just going and it's extracting the disk onto the SD card. 
this takes some time, so be patient. And we're doing, if you have several games, it's going to take you a little while to do all this process, but it is definitely worth it. So we've ripped three games onto the SD card. Each game took about 25 minutes, give or take, uh, to extract. I don't know if that is hardware dependent or based on the SD card or both, uh, but your mileage may vary. So let's try out one of these games and see if it works. So let's, uh, let's fire up Dragon Ball Z. So one of the features of, of Swiss is that you can actually load cheat codes. Uh, I don't have any cheat codes, but when you select the game, if you press Y, it looks for an accompanying cheat code file, which is a GCT file, I believe. So you can look for those, download them, put them on your SD card, and then when you fire up the game, it'll give you an option to, uh, you know, add some extra flair to your gaming. I have never played this game before in my entire life, so I have no idea what I'm doing. So, this is the planet where Kakar But at least you can yeah, bypass the cutscenes. <laughs> this soil should grow some fine Cybermen. <laughs> Well, that, that, that was just a weird game. There's just nothing more to say about that. So one of the interesting things that you can do with this system now is you can run what's called an emulator, which is a piece of software that pretends to be another piece of hardware. There have been several emulators created for the GameCube, um, but I'm going to focus on just a few of them. Uh, all of them are on that website, GC Forever. So let's focus on some Nintendo-based ones. So the first one is called FCEUGX, and it is a regular Nintendo Entertainment System emulator. It's a very nice interface, so it, it feels really easy to use. So let's, uh, let's try something out and see how it works. So one of the first things I think about this is that the controller, the GameCube controller, isn't in the right position to use the D-pad for Nintendo. At least in my opinion. Of course, I also suck at it, so... Uh, but you can also use the thumbstick, but I'm not sure how that's going to feel. I gotta say, it actually doesn't feel too bad. I wish the the D-pad was up here as opposed to the stick. But, you know what, if you just want to have a little fun playing some older games, this is great. It, it, it doesn't feel laggy, it doesn't feel like there's any delay. I'm not gonna tell you where to find ROM files. They're everywhere. You can find them yourselves. Boy, am I terrible at this. Super Nintendo feels like there's a little sluggishness. The, the controller feels a little sloppy. There, there doesn't seem to be too much of a delay, but I can, I can kind of feel it. I know that seems kind of, you know, unscientific and whatnot, but 
just telling you, I, I can feel that the, there's a slight bit of delay and I feel like I have to really push the button in order to get it to do what I want. So, but it's still fun. Great way to revisit old games without having to go out and buy all new systems. And it's the same as the other one. You move the C stick and then you can come in and go back to the main menu and then you can exit out from here. So the Nintendo emulator and the Super Nintendo emulator look to be made by the same developer. Not 64 is a, a Nintendo 64 emulator, which was the previous console to this one. So I know from my experience that the, the N64 is a very hard console to emulate. So I am not expecting much from this. The N64 feels like there's a little bit of delay um, not on the controller, but like in the video, uh, there's some stuttering a little bit and it looks like it's skipping some frames, but I could be wrong. Uh, Mario 64 is probably one of the easiest games to, to emulate, or at least gets, seems to get the best performance. Now, it doesn't seem to be any way of bringing up an in-game menu. Uh, so I guess it looks like the only way to get out of an N64 game is shutting off the power. So it's a little disappointing that the only way to get out of this is to actually like turn off the console. Uh, but let's see if GoldenEye runs. Wow, that was a slowdown and a half. Ooh, this isn't good. It's a little slow. Yeah, no, this does not work. So as I suspected, N64 is a very hard system to emulate, so it's going to be touch and go with certain games. Mario 64 is going to work because it's just a, a, a lighter weight game comparatively. Uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day is probably not going to work. If Goldeneye was that bad, then Conker's is going to be totally bad. Uh, so I think we'll try something else. So the last emulator we're going to take a look at is a program called VBAGX. And looking at the screen, you can see that it's probably made by the same people that made the, uh, the Nintendo one and the Super Nintendo one. And what this does is it emulates a Game Boy Advance. There is a Game Boy player that you can strap onto the bottom of the GameCube in order to play Game Boy Advance cartridges. Uh, but this lets you do it via software. So let's try the three different types of Game Boys and see how they go. First, we'll try the original Game Boy. Honestly, feels pretty good. It feels very responsive. The buttons feel right. Again, it still has the same problem that I felt with like the original NES and that the game, the D-pad isn't in the right spot. And again, moving the C-stick brings up the menu and we can go back and try something else. So Super Mario Brothers Deluxe, that is for Game Boy Color, which of course is just Super Mario Brothers. What is with that weird screen thing? What is with this? Yeesh. So if I move the stick up and down, I can move where the screen sees. Yeah, don't like that. I don't know if that was actually a thing in the game. I'll have to pull out my Game Boy Color and see if it actually did that. And no, Game Boy Advance does not play. Yeah, I don't even think we need to choose a game. It is just drops out, drop out cities here in terms of the audio stuttering and everything. Everything's just really slow. Okay, so that was our look at the software that you can run on a Pico booted GameCube. There's some really great things out there. Emulators are fun. Uh, if you've got ROM backups of your cartridges, backing up your games is easy, but it takes a little bit of time, uh, which is the best thing that this can do. Uh, Swiss is a really great piece of software. If you're lucky enough to get the GameCube component cables, you can make your display look really great by forcing games uh, to a progressive scan output. Uh, you don't need memory cards because you can simulate memory cards with Swiss. Uh, and you can also use a software in order to back up games off your memory card. So all in all, this has been a, a good 
experience and Swiss is some great software and there's some great homebrew out there for GameCube. Hopefully at some point there'll be some more. But right now, this is what we've got. So thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you enjoy my content, I put, two, I put out a video every two weeks. And that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.